Mars is trying to, to get on the top, Karma was there and also with why. So they, they didn't kill the, the Nasus and Nasus eventually become unkillable and just draw at least three people's attention in order to stop him and just successfully run away. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, and I mean, I think they also kind of crafted that plan attempting to leverage the skill vulnerabilities that there might be on their team. Uh, so the heck is sitting there at plat two, where I believe uh, the top laner for TSM was sitting at like silver two. Uh, and so if they can isolate that lane, that's likely to be a point of power for them. Uh, as we obviously saw in uh, the most recent match. Uh, meanwhile, uh, on the other side, you have uh, a Diamond 4 ADC and a Diamond 4 jungler matched up against... Vorpal is also a Diamond 4 with uh, the support kind of being the lowest ranked person. But in terms of overall like ranked skill, you have a very even matchup pretty much everywhere else across the map as it looks like we are waiting for some people to come into the game, although there is a what looks like a bio break going on. Understandable. Oh, uh, I would probably need to change my pants if I was going against that NASA's last game too. <laughs> That's great. But I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> um, for TSM, I think if they... Still want to go Ari. I feel like the Ari isn't very effective for last game, um, especially with the Glacial Augment and Ignite. I feel like if you if you like opt in for Ignite and try to do like a kill lane, then uh, Electric Kill is probably better. Um, yeah, I Ari. think I think Glacial Augment on Ari is really really nice for being able to control team fights. Better, right, but they haven't done that. They haven't executed that. Good. I would say, I but like but they did. Synergy. Yeah, they didn't do that, and also they can't. They need to do something, I think, to disrupt the style that uh, SRE was trying to play with, where they just get a little bit of shove in mid lane, and then Nubs and Liam roam together and break down a lane, because objectively TSM's bot lane was winning until the four-man party yeah, showed yeah. up a couple of times in a row. Right. But I do think, I do think that even if they're winning, uh, you can see SR, SRM is, um, SRE is, is keeping the pressure of their bot lane just because of their picks. If, like, the pick is, is swapped, like a long-range poke, and keep the pressure of volume, maybe they have a better shot because if you have the volume priority, you can have the um, shot calling from volume and just ask your jungler to do something with you, right? Yeah, definitely. And I also kind of wonder if it would be a better strategy here to just kind of drop the bands attacking the heck. Like, you invested a lot, and he was still someone who just kind of ran over the game. And instead, look to kind yeah, of yeah, ban cool. out some of those things that gave your team problems in that game. So maybe try to take away the karma, find something that, try to force Nubs onto something that he's not going to be able to wave clear on as safely, and disrupt his ability to roam with Liam. Or, I mean, I'd say hit Liam's champ pool, but Liam has a lot of champions that all kind of go in the Vi mold of being very brawly, very in your face, that he's happy to play against just yeah. about anyone. I think an attack on, on the uh, SRE's mid laner is probably a better strategy. And also uh, try to get like a mall fight or something. Oh, so, and, and it looks like they're going to be changing around the teams a little bit. So uh, it looks like Boheim is coming in for team tsm and if i remember correctly yeah so boheim is sort of their other top laner that's been playing some uh is significantly higher ranked so it was let's see i'm now on let's the wrong. see the picks and bands i'll say in 
let me get the spectator up for pro draft. As... Did I accidentally quit? No. Okay. And we're going to lose people's names again, and I apologize for that. But that was last games. Why is it not showing the new one? Interesting. What? Are they trying to just copycat their last games? No, games no, it's it's showing. Game. It's for some reason it's showing the old one. Uh, I'm gonna have to ch give me a second. I'm gonna have to change the URL that it's. Oh, I know why. Because I'm an idiot. <laughs> there we go. It's it's been a while uh, for me on setting up some of this stuff. I see. I would say so. This is probably gonna be a little bit more evenly matched top lane here. Um, although I think even if the top lanes were even in that game, it felt like. It felt to me like uh, SRE still kind of had the upper hand because they were able to roam around the map a little more effectively. And Let me check Bohem's uh, champion pool. So he played Garen and, and Aatrox um, in the last two games when they played against each other. So is that a Silas? I'll say uh, there's a Silas there. There's a uh, another Aatrox. Aatrox. A Nasus, a Fiora. Another Nasus. And also Nasus. All right. Well, so it looks so like we're nice. having a very, very similar kind of uh, champion pools here for them. Very interesting. So we'll see as Morgana hits the first ban uh, taken away from Threshold there. Although, by the name, uh, say as we see the Thresh ban, uh, not particularly surprising to find out that Threshold is a bit of a Thresh one trick. Good name, I like that. Uh, I agree, it's a solid name. Uh, meanwhile, we have Zack and Trindamir taken away as the Lux band al ban also comes in. Uh, I would assume for Threshold again. But and karma, please. Yeah, Threshold seems to be the Lux player on their team and has a very, very solid record for it. As we see the Zac ban against Liam again and the Trendemir ban as well. And this time the Ash ban has come in. Uh I'm not really sure how I feel about that. It didn't feel like the Ash was kind of the problem in the last match. I feel like if they ban Ash, then this time maybe the SRE just take away Kate from them, and then from the second and third ban, they can just pick Karma again. What is TSM going to do? Well, so TSM might be willing to pick Karma here, which would at least... Wait, did they play Karma? I would say, I did definitely saw a few games of Karma on Ordinary Fog's uh, champion history, although it looks like actually Morgana was a Ordinary Fog takeaway, not a Karma, t or not a... Uh special takeaway uh, although obviously that probably became a flex pick for them to a degree um, but there's at least one game uh in fact one of the games against sre uh the one they lost admittedly but ordinary fog was willing to play karma as we now see the hecarim coming in for tsm uh that it's is the hecarim it's a silver hecarim combo is a super duper fast pony yep I'll say, and I feel like right now I would like I to I feel like see... I thought you would just take, take Karma away again. I'll say, I would like to see them take Karma away because the Sivir Karma Hecarim combo, <laughs> if you thought the Sivir Hecarim combo was a fast pony, wait till you see it with a uh, Karma speeding him up. But instead they choose to lock in Renekton. Uh, and so we're certainly going to have some degree of mismatch here because... The only matching pick so far is the AD carry. Uh, TSM with a jungler, although admittedly with the possibility of flexing Hecarim to the top lane. Uh, not sure mm -hmm. if that's a Boheim champion or not, but is a champion that traditionally has been in the top lane. Uh, instead is going to opt for the Garen pick against the Renekton. Uh, must oh. have looked out in the sign into the crowd and saw the sign that said G2, please pick Garen. 
Uh... Actually, I, I think I think Garen is is kind of a good pick into a Necton, just because. I feel like Garen should win that matchup, to be honest. Um, yeah, I can see that. And we're now going to see probably jungle bans coming across uh, from TSM, and I would expect a degree of support bans coming in from SRE, uh, depending on what they want to do. Uh, I would also definitely believe like a Karma or something as a ban might come through, just to sort of invalidate TSM. I mean, TSM's going to have the ability to counter pick in mid lane if they want to. Uh, although they may just choose to pick the karma oh, here if they want. But we'll have to see what TSM is going to come through with the ban. I uh, feel like karma is a better ban. I don't think, the, I don't, I mean, as sorry you said, I, I don't have any reason to give away karma. I'll say in the Ooh. pro draft bans are having some issues for SRE. Uh, it was a Nautilus, right? Oh, yeah. So it was a Nautilus ban. So Nautilus and Talon ended up being their two bans in the second phase here. Uh, as the Nautilus is not showing. TSM is picking. I think, I think they should pick their support here. Yep, uh, and they're gonna pick a Leona, yeah. which is a very, I mean, it's its a similar kind of aggressive lane that they're looking for, albeit with Sivir, maybe not as much laning prowess in terms of direct fights. Uh, obviously a very strong shover once she gets some items under her belt, and once she gets like an Essence Reaver or something so that she can keep up her mana pool. Uh, meanwhile, uh, They pick Ziggs and Karma. What? Oh, sorry. Uh, Ziggs is apparently a Vi pick. Ziggs was what? Uh, the the really? Ziggs yeah. was supposed to be a Vi pick, and it was instead a misclick. Okay, okay, okay. That's fine. Well, it's it's not going to be reflected on the app anyway. Uh, yes, so that is correct. So, yes, I'm end up picking a Zillion, which I do like to pick. Hmm. I was saying, so that is going to be one speedy pony going in there. Right. Mm. All right. Well, I do like PSM's picks better this game. Um, because, I mean, th th their team is, is kind of like composed as very... Uh, straightforward, just go in with Silver out and Hecarim. And I do not think SRE set has very good PO except for the Karma. Karma has used her the Dementra E, then is, is effectively doing nothing in the team fight, right? And also this time, the mid jungle synergy, I mean, for the 2v2, I feel like. So it's not going to be one-sided from the SRE chasing down KSM for the mid jungle 2v2. As you wish. Alright, as we're now seeing the bans come in legitimately here, as I yell at Liam for not banning TSM XD. <laughs> oh, this time the tournament code works. Oh, so it looks like the tournament code worked this time. Uh, and we're just seeing people pick up their own champions though anyway. Oh, so I, yeah, I definitely feel like TSM has more tools than they had last game to actually fight around things uh, in the early game where they didn't before. Uh, they weren't able to. I would say Nubs is still going to be on the Karma. Um, they have a very, very kind of oppressive poke heavy bot lane against a all in engage bot lane for SRE once again. Uh, this time though, I think the Hecarim is going to be a little bit stronger of a brawler than uh, Karthus was. Come and on, both Garen and Renekton are going to show off more early game power than we saw oh. with 
uh, the Jax versus Nasus matchup. I do, I do think on, uh, for this game on the Azar you said it's pretty similar to last game because they have okay. like literally the same um, three three picks for for mid jungle and support. And I feel like Kate is an even better pick than Ash in terms of uh, wave clear and pushing power. So they should still try to keep the um, falling pressure like last game. And then I think it's up to TSM to adapt to their, their team comp. I mean, this time they can definitely try to um, match the aggressive from their mid and jungle synergy with Hecarim and Zillion. And also, since Zillion is go probably going to take teleport, I'm expecting when there's something going on on the bot side, then Zillion can help with maybe Garen as well. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Uh, and it definitely feels like they have a lot more utility here than they did before. Uh, as your I'll, I'll get rid of these if this ends up looking really bad, but... I can't do team labels in game, but I can, in fact, do them on my overlay as we're going to see the game start here in a second. And I'm probably going to take about 10 seconds to decide that these team labels look terrible and I'm going to delete them. Oh, wait, no. Now we have spectator delay. My bad. I, I think it looks okay. Uh, wait until you see it in game. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe. Um, top lane, I don't know. Wait, this this time Liam is, um, why is from right, and Hakram is right side. Yup. I'm. Hmm? Oh, so yeah, that. They're playing on different sides here. Um, I'm not necessarily sure how the jungle difference there is going to affect things. Vi obviously has better ability to go over walls. Uh, I'm kind of surprised to see Hecarim play Ignite instead of Ghost here. I feel like Ghost almost functions as an Ignite for Hecarim, given his passive. Plus also um... gives you the ability of the utility. Goals like takes longer to to do damage. Ignite is is pretty, is more of a early game oriented. Um, That's fair. Summer spell, and also I'm thinking maybe TSM can try to just start, like red or maybe start the Raptors this time for Hackram, so so that the Hackram can do like a full clear, and avoid fighting with Wire for early game, and also I feel like. I think it's still TSM for the early game. They are still safe for their balling to try to apply pressure. Probably gonna be pushed in by SRE. So for the early game, I feel like all three lanes, except for melee, me, uh, actually melee lanes is going to be uh, uh, SRE's priority as well. So all three lanes would be pushed and Hecarim is probably should not go in for like an early gank. Instead, I think the Hecarim should go for like a full clear and try to get his uh, jungle item finish as soon as possible and trying to looking for, for, for ganks after he gets some level and after the bot lane has like uh, set up for him uh, with the minion wave or other stuff. So I'm going to try to drag these to make them as unobtrusive as possible. Let's see if this actually works. Um... Yeah, no, I definitely agree. I think the... Um, I assume Hecarim goes Predator here? Uh, I can't imagine... I mean, I guess I could imagine other keystones that he would go, but the move speed synergizes so well with him that getting that clear, getting that boots ends up giving him a lot of early game power that he might not have otherwise. Um, yeah, I'm thinking, I'm thinking the Predator f with Ignite, and if he's taking, like, Ghost, maybe, maybe have the Conqueror. Right. Yeah, I think that might make sense. And this time, the boy definitely has to think twice between just uh, blind uh, invading the Hecarim jungle. 
All right, I Hecarim gotta say, conqueror. not sure that Khans plays Hecarim. That is a default skin, and I'm not sure how I feel. I'm actually very sure how I feel about that. <laughs> uh, otherwise, we have the skin <laughs> synergy in the bot skin. lane with the default Caitlyn Zyra skin, and meanwhile, the uh, default Hecarim and Zillion skins. As I'm going to muck with the scoreboard a little bit, guys. You're going to have to give me a second. I'm not surprised by the default Zillion skin, come on. Like, Zillion, all Zillion skins looks like pretty ugly. I do uh, not like their... There skin. are some okay ones. Uh, I do I do, I do, do think you, you probably need to move the, the, the position of the TSM-0. Oh, oh, oh. Are they going to fight? Are they going to fight? No. No. There's a pause going on. Oh, so do you need me to... Okay. I would say I did move the you TSM. Is it not visible here? It's visible, but it's like too on, on the very uh, right, right side of the. Of there we go. I I, I centered it oh, a little no, bit no, more. No, SRE. You put SRE on, on on the original position should be fine. Now right. you have to move TSM a little bit left as well. All right. Uh, and weird full screen quirk, the UI doesn't seem to yeah. update on the stream. It's very good now, it's very good now. Okay, cool, we'll leave this like this. Sorry, I didn't really think through the scoreboard element until the middle of the first game. Uh, and so was doing that very, very last minute. <sighs> League is like not the, the, my normal... The, the AD carry on SRE side, but now the seems... Wait, I... Oh, they're resuming. Yeah. Uh, Caitlyn was still in the loading screen when everybody was else in the game for some reason. Uh, as we're now seeing a 5 stack come in from SRE alongside this bush, and we're going to probably see them go in to get a deep ward here. As Garen's also circling back, which could be very dangerous for him if he goes too far. Well, I think this duo got spotted by Bazillion. Oh, it still yeah, forced the flash out. Oh, no! Run! Oh, nice flash. Good preemptive flash there to make sure that nothing untoward happens as we're going to get camp spawning in 15 seconds here. Uh, both teams are probably going to have a pretty good idea where the junglers are starting with, I guess, technically Vi had enough time to get to the red buff, but it would have been a little bit closer than I assume she would have wanted. You didn't uh, see, but you did the blue team put a, a ward down at the red team's red, red buff? It does not look like there is still a ward there. Okay, okay. Um, and I'm not sure if they got vision of there. Uh, that being said, we're to see pretty standard level one stuff here. Uh, Leona running ignite is no surprise. Both Zillion and Karma running teleport. Uh, and we were wrong about Predator. The Hecarim is in fact going Conqueror. Oh, I'm actually surprised. I feel like if you go Conqueror, it's probably better with Ghost. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. Uh, meanwhile, Renekton also going Conqueror, while uh, Garrett is instead going Grasp. is going to give him a little bit more in the way of sustain in the lane, especially in shorter trades. Uh, Conqueror obviously going to ramp up better over longer term trades. But Garen does get the level 2 off here. As we'll see if his lack of flash early on goes on to punish him. Meanwhile, Sivir getting the shove in, which is kind of her thing. I, I do like the uh, Vi clear rock better, because if I remember correctly, the golems give more, give the most experience out of all the jungle camps. Yeah, right? I do believe the Krugs are the, or not the Krugs, uh, no yeah, the Krugs are the uh, most experienced. As the Leona comes in now, and not... Oh, and there's a nice flash Q coming in from the Vi, which is going to turn into a first blood for Caitlyn. Um, I mean, I think that's also part of why Vi went the route that they did. Because uh, Liam was able to sort of stay around the bot lane, looking at the lane that uh, TSM was running. They were almost certainly going to want to try something early. Although it arguably was dangerous given that they knew the Hecarim was going to be high up in the top lane for them. 
and Hakram still didn't clear his uh, crowds. Nope, Definitely instead he is like coming here and looking to counter jungle away from Liam. He'll probably go back to his Krugs at some point, but I think he wants to take as much from Liam in the topside jungle as he can. Uh, instead, but the point is, like, if you if if you do like Liam, you take Krug and then you gank and then just you go back and just buy items. Uh, after the Krug reset, you clear the Krug again and then you gank again. You you literally getting the same amount of experience and probably gold as well. While you actually uh, have impact on the on the on the side. Yeah. But if you do something like Hagram to this rod, then you literally just farm and like do nothing. Oh, there's something going on about Yep, as we see a double kill coming in the 2v2. Leona probably going to die here, uh, but definitely a worthwhile trade with two kills coming to the Sivir for one to the Zyra. And also, uh, Zyra is pushing this wave in, so Kate is going to, to lose like one and a half wave. Yep. Although, with the first blood money that Caitlyn has, is basically just going to tie the gold up here. Sure. This time, I think TSM's balling is like, uh, doing way better. But they, they did get like solo kills last game as well, but this game it happens way earlier. Hopefully they can yeah. snowball the... In and I mean, game. this is what they're going to be looking for with their comp anyway. Like, when you pick Leona, that's the kind of thing that you're looking for. You're looking for the engage, you're looking for the heavy CC. Uh, Leona, a very one-way champion, obviously. <laughs> Lots also, of ways to go in. This time it is, is, is going way more even. Side. So, at least this time they don't need to worry about, like, a very stacked um, Nasus. Yep. I mean, instead, they have Nasus Brother. It's Renekton. They have Brother, right? Um, I believe so. Yeah, from the door, I believe. Unless they change that. Oh, there's something going on in the jungle. Why it's trying to invade? Uh, but without the support of their their silence, and I I think Hakram just secured the blue. He did, but Vi was able to take the scuttle there and gain control. Huh? Now, Hakram just charged at Vi with his. What is that? Lost something? I don't know. I can't remember the skill names. Uh. Uh, the Zoomy Zoomy. Um. <laughs> I don't remember exactly what this code is it. Uh. Warp. No, not that's the passive. Uh, Rampage of the Q, devastating charge. Yeah, devastating the... charge. Warpath is the name of the passive, and I've played a lot of Hecarim in my time, and I learned that today. <laughs> Congratulations! We learn something every day. Yeah. Wow. In fact, I think no, that might be a second thing I've learned today, so I don't even need to go into work tomorrow. I'm already ahead <laughs> of the curve. Alright, but lots of kind of medium-sized lanes. Um, Zillion, obviously a pretty good push. Meanwhile, Vi was able to pick up the Mountain Drake there. Caitlyn Zyra shoving in the Sivir pretty effectively. Well, I feel like if they do have the vision on, on that, it's, it's a perfect time for the ball to go in again. I think Hakram's looking to do something for me lane. Yep, although he is still level 5, so can't quite turn around the gank. Uh, meanwhile, Vi is sitting there at 6, and so if this were to be a fight before Hecarim, well, there's Hecarim hitting 6, so they would at least be even in that regard. I have say... some uh, minions away from the Zillion and get six, but he's actually very low. There's honey for him in the uh, in the river, so he's probably good. But he decided to recall and maybe just finish his jungle item. I was saying picks up a Caulfield's Warhammer here, which I believe is going to go into the Warrior, right? Right. All right. Well. 
let's get rid of Chad here as well. I'm checking the vision now. I think for TSM side, it's probably all dark. Um, well, top side, there's, there's some skirmish going on and, and Garen flashed away from Renekton. All right, so if we look here, this is the vision that SRE has right now. And this is the vision that TSM has, not a lot in the way of wards, just a little bit around top and pretty much nothing else on the map. Right. Well, for the vision war, definitely SRE is winning right now. Um, that's partly because they have priority balling and also they have uh, it's helping them doing vision as well. They flash four stats are on the Renekton, but the Hecarim ult comes in and forces him back. He's going to turn the kill. Meanwhile, on bot side, we're going to see kills coming in in a very similar manner to how we saw them before. Although Darken is... Oh, when the Zillion ult is weighted out successfully by SRE, and so they're able to turn that into a overall oh, two for one on the map. Actually waited until the Zillion ult expires. Oh, the Zillion is able to wait here, so that probably means the end of this push. They can just establish some vision control again. Yep. So, side of TSM is going to be all black. I'll say, meanwhile, Garen only getting a single plate off there, although it gets very, very close to claiming a second one. Oh, uh, when, when SRE is focusing Balin, TSM is trying to do something to help them. They successfully get a kill top, and then I think Hecarim can secure this rip curl for, uh, for TSM. Uh, and I would be I would be curious... Oh wait, there's, there's a fighting going on top. Yeah. Oh my goodness, and the heck turns around the 2v1 into a 1v2 double kill. What? As some question mark pings go down on the map. <laughs> what was that? That oh was Boheim turning what he thought was an advantageous play for him instead into a really, really disastrous play because a lane that maybe the Renekton had a little bit of an edge in before, but was generally steady, just kind of exploded, losing, I think, two turret plates there losing multiple ways of farm, having to go back without teleport. Renekton's gonna show up here a full thousand gold ahead as the karma's getting caught out. Um, and slowly so burns to death. Because both of uh, Garen and, and uh, Hecarim do not have all at the time. Otherwise, the Renekton will be killed like in a second. But yeah. now, once again, there's something going on top. I was saying, now Garen is just getting s systematically starved out of the resources and this turret is going to go down here for the first turret bonus oh. for SRI. Oh, this part, Garen is able to wait out by out uh, without dying, so it's kind of a small win out of a uh, disaster. Yeah, although it did turn into a turret as well. But you're right, it's not a disaster, but we're going to see a teleport there forced out from Karma. Oh, nice flash. So we see a flash come in from Zyra in exchange for the Hecarim ult and also the teleport coming in from Karma. Um, probably a worthwhile trade overall for TSM. Um, One thing I do the like Rift the Rift is... is that they, they group uh, way earlier this game and they're trying to use the Rift Herald to, to get some free, free money. So as Karma comes in and the Hecarim is probably, well, is going to get the revive here, but might just pop out afterwards. Uh, although Sivir's coming in here, we're likely going to see at least one of the people go down here. That's true, I think, oh, Karma is probably going to be the sacrificial lamb here. Oh, and Renekton is There's also going to get sacrificed yeah. here, which is going to be a nice bit of money in the pocket. So the Vi gets to escape, but probably not at a worthwhile cost for SRE. 
Oh, for SRE, they also get a Balin turn, but I feel like the turn is going down, like, some, uh, any, any, anyone soon, so I don't think that's a good win for them. Um, I definitely think TSM win this trade. Yeah, definitely, especially if they can turn this and apply a little bit more pressure on mid lane, although plates are falling right now. Uh, and so, SRE has a pretty solid 3,000 gold advantage early on, uh, although I definitely feel like... TSM have the stronger scaling comp in this game, uh, especially around team fights. Although, in last game we saw basically nothing actually approaching team fights, and it was all just small skirmishes and picks, which I guess makes sense when you're not playing at a professional level. Uh, the sort of vision you need to set up and the pre-work you have to do to get a team fight set up is less than people, or as much more than people expect, and doesn't tend to get done as well at this level. Um, all these players, obviously, very good, and... Well, all better than me in my current form. <laughs> Given that I haven't played League seriously in, like, two and a half years at this point. Uh, as Hecarim goes in a little bit... And leaves his all and, and just... And uses old and Leona flash ults here, but also missed out. This isn't good. This probably means um, a dragon for for SRE. Although this fight did get kind of turned around, uh, so oh. it does end up being a one for one. The uh, Leona and Sivir split, but oh. I do believe that's a shutdown bonus off of the Vi there, and so probably overall a one fight for TSM. Vi is getting too excited and just outed in herself without the support of, of her team. The um, TSM is able to turn around and kill Vi before Karma tries to flash and save save her. So and it ended up with like, uh, is it 2 for 2? No, not 2 for 2, right? It's one it, was for a one. Two for, it was a 1 for 1 overall. Yeah, it's a one for one overall, but I think I thought you should be able to take the uh, free dragon. Yep, and you'll see that Liam is heading that way right now. I will say that uh, Liam there got to use one of my favorite mechanics in this game uh, on Vi, where he ulted Sivir, which you would normally sort of think of as a oh, Sivir can just spell shield it and be fine, but actually smote Sivir right as he got in range which knocks off the spell shield and lets the ult go through. Oh. One of those very small know. interactions that you can see. You didn't know that. I only know that, like, Alistar counters Sivir because you cannot dodge the ZWQ combo. Yeah, you can only spell shield one of the two. Uh, and... I, I think we can check the items right now. So, on SRE side, uh, Renekton finished the... Uh, Spear of Sodin, right? And yep. also Tiamat. Jungle item and two third pieces of the train divorce. Karma has the uh, Unholy Grail. Kate has finished IE. Zara has, uh, has a sorcery boost with the. Is that the name? I can't remember. Uh, Haunted Bone. Guys? Um, yes, I'm sad. Um, Karma has a. Uh, Black Cleaver and a Finnish uh, jungle item for Hecarim and uh, Archangel uncharged version for for uh, Zillion. Wait, I forgot about the name. I was saying, Caitlyn just finished her second item as well, so she's going to have a little bit of a spike here, although obviously uh, Caitlyn traditionally kind of falls down into a trough in the mid game before scaling back up in the late game because of her attack range. So Silver is kind of a similar situation, right? Actually, I think I feel like Silver is for mid game has better utility than than Kate. But late game is also there's there was something called the 400 CS Silver win situ uh, condition. Uh, popularized by everybody's favorite refuses to end the game team in Janair who <laughs> recently completed their historic 0-18 run through LCK Summer. Hey, come on. They're, they're not the only record holder. They have some some team in LCL who got like 0-30, right? 
Uh, yeah, but they're the first human LCK to ever go without winning a series. Grass to them. Achievement. Or as Reddit would put it, sadplane.jpg. Uh. I was saying, meanwhile, Hecarim is just kind of being forced out of his own jungle here. Why do you have to pause? After an action, you use, use stun, you can just E away, right? Yeah, I think maybe he saw the Vi, he thought the Vi might be coming in and that he might be in trouble. Uh, as the Heck continues to not give a heck about numbers, uh, although we'll see just how little he cares in a second, as Sivir and Garen and Leona are all coming for him. Oh, come back, Sivir just said, and the Heck is like, oh, I'm flashing, I'm gonna just kill you. Understand what he was going for, although I don't really love the usage of the flash there. The f turning the flash into a at like he it's a zero turns a zero for one into a possible one for one. But if I'm going to commit the flash there, I'd rather it would have to be in a guaranteed one for one instead of a at best I go even. Mm. But I'm probably a little more conservative with my summoners than uh, other people might be, and. We now see a two-man Baron starting here from SRE as they jump on the Leona, who is one tanky girl. Uh, as that Garen comes in in the middle, uh, Zillion manages to save the Hecarim's life, which is good because the Hecarim is not a tanky boy here. He's like a pony. He's not a guy. He's not a boy. I'll say he's not even a tanky pony, though. That's true. I've met some tanky well, ponies in my time, and Hecarim is not one of them. Yeah, because this Hecarim is it's not yet building tanky right now. He's, he has like the uh, warrior engine and also uh, try to finish his Triforce. I think only after that will he build like tankness. But good news for the TSM side, uh, they didn't now finish uh, his... Um, and should have more ability power as well as like survivability from the shield. I was like, yeah, Zillion is really the only person on TSM who's actually up gold on his counterpart. With the Karma oh. not making a ton of headway this game. Uh, I definitely feel like the Zillion has been a little bit better of a pick in this game. Yeah, I think Zillion is, is probably gonna be the guy to buy time for TSM. Well, they're trying to, to get on to the heck. Yep, or at least frighten him off. <laughs> Hoping to grab the mountain dragon here, uh, although we'll trade it for Baron Vision coming in. As uh, SRE has a pretty solid strangle of vision around Baron here. Uh, maybe a black area up here. But not really any vision, so to speak, of for TSM you can see have very very little vision past their river at all a couple of wards in this side of the jungle and that's it uh, meanwhile TSM at least has a little bit more in the way of wards uh... so um, I think this time TSM can get dragon just finish and, and run please oh my god nope and it instead is going to be a triple mountain drake for SRE uh, which obviously is only an impactful change if your team manages to pick up objectives. Oh! Is that Hecarim just gets melted? Uh, oh my god. Gotta say, definitely questioning the Triforce play uh, in here. I understand wanting to do it, but that Hecarim is made of paper mache right now. Come on, he, he has a dream. He had a dream. So he's made a paper mache, he has no tankiness, he has no escape summoner spells. Oh, at this point, maybe, just maybe, buy a ninja tabi and then uh, I, uh, buy a stopwatch. Oh, so yeah, I think SRE is just going to pick up the Baron here. Like, like, no way, three yeah, mountain drakes, no way for the Hecarim to get there in time. No smite. No smite, no steal. 
So with silver, uh, but without IE, I don't think they can effectively break here for that, especially if they still have a cake and the empowered minions. Um, I do think I thought it's time for Azari to actually push and siege to, to take down all of the tier 2 turn and even try to look to break the base. Yeah, I think this is going to be a disappointing power play for SRE if they don't come out of this with at least the 6 outer and inner turrets overall. Mm -hmm. um, and ideally I'm sure they would like to break the base, but I suspect that this one will mostly be focused around really cementing their gold lead here. And from there they can just kind of push vision deeper and deeper and push TSM on more of a back foot. As we see a little bit more in the way of deep vision coming here. As I discover, I can ping as a spectator. Weird. But you can ping as a spectator? Apparently. I assume the players can't see it, but I can. I see. Interesting. Oh, nice feature. So now, Azari is just hunting in the TSM jungle, trying to, to get a pick before uh, doing the final push. I'll say, and the Zillion just gets popped as the heck is popping off here again. And the heck goes down, but at what cost is the entirety of Team TSM goes down? And so really, has anything changed between now and the rest of Summer Split? <laughs> Nothing. I'd say see you in the gauntlet, TSM, but we won't because we already qualified for Worlds. Ah! <sighs> <laughs> Nice one. But this might just be the game. We'll see how aggressive uh, SRE wants to be. It looks like they at oh, least I are going to take this one, first turret. Maybe they can finish? I don't know. Probably no. We are alive. And with white tanking those turn, I don't think this is happening. Ooh, and Threshold gets in there for some damage. Uh, unfortunately for TSM, there's nothing really there in terms of engaged tools. Sivirult was down, Zillion wasn't around. Um, but TSM certainly is one misstep away from going down 2-0 in these finals. Yeah, it would be pretty disappointing if I can I can't really see all five games of this series. But good news, Hakram finally finishes his Triforce. Congrats. Uh, the 26 minute Triforce spike. Is that really a spike? I mean, not all spikes have to be sharp. Alright, I feel like it's just a little, little poke, maybe, maybe on the slope. Oh, I don't know. The 26 minute Triforce needle. Hmm, Triforce needle. I'll say, um, yeah. Look at the silver, is so scared. He cannot even like try to wait here because of the reenactment can just double dash to her and just beat it. Trying Say, to go in. And threshold goes down. And this might just be the game if they can parlay this into an advantage, but instead it looks like they're backing off to take dragon instead. Liam of course as the jungler always worried about his fantasy points. Fancy point. And Why? Where, where does this meme come from? I would say, and uh, I guess the Infernal also makes your team do more damage, and it is scientifically proven that doing death more damage is better than doing less damage. So just stealing away all the camps from TSM, um, SRE, well, without Baron buff, trying to push, well, it's definitely a little bit harder because of the Zillion and Silver um, mage here. Let's see. Yeah, TSM has really, really solid wave clear, but they are behind a gargantuan amount in this game. It's time to, to try to find a pick. So now SRE is pretty splitted and I try to get a pick on maybe Y or maybe on one of the 
uh, squish your members. Oh, now so I... And for their part, SRE is probably just trying to keep TSM hemmed in the base, making sure they can't get any vision down. The Baron's spawning in 30 seconds, and we're likely to see that that's the point that they'll... Unless they can find a fight right now... Oh. Maybe there's only Baron. And there's the fight right now, so yeah, that's going to be the game. As a 5 for o comes down here, as the Heck does a pretty good number on his opposition in this game. But really a solid game all around from SRE, as they're going to take a 2 nothing lead in the series. Uh, as we are now joined by Liam Galt, who has decided to come shitpost in Twitch chat right after their game. Uh, <laughs> so congratulations, Liam. But you are honest, the I ultimate think, shitposter. I think Gantam has done a, a way better job at these early games compared to, to, the, to game one. Yeah, it definitely felt like the early game was a little bit better, but I think it fell apart in a very, very similar way for TSM, where they had a very couple unfortunate plays around the top that broke that side open, and then the sort of coordinated roams with Nubs and Liam to bottom kind of helped break the bottom lane open, and Dark Nine Threshold held up about as well as they could to their credit, but... Uh, I mean, Vorpal got really, really big and started doing lots of damage. Like, if we look overall, I would say <laughs> Caitlyn yeah, and Zyra I... did more damage than anyone on the other team. And the only person who did more damage than Zyra, besides the Caitlyn, is the Heck floating up there at the 17,000 damage mark. I, but I do think, I do like PSM's drop this time better. And I think with this drop, this should be actually like looking to fight around both sides instead of trying to do the fight top side and i think maybe game they will go back to blue side and try to actually i i do suggest to actually bend away the karma and leave the cage open and try to get the cage of uh silver i think i think getting a cage and apply pressure is probably better. I mean, to to get ahead of, of from both sides, is you kill them. The other way is to is to pressure them and then call your jungler and and your mid laner to both come bot and then just die. Yeah, definitely um, between the two teams. The I, would, I would say that SRE is more organized around their jungler play. Like, at least to a degree, to me, it kind of feels like um, Kons is kind of doing his own thing, uh, which I guess makes more sense with Karthus. Karthus doesn't really have any brawling ability, and so he's just going to want to farm to six and drop some sick ults and farm Dark Harvest Axe. Um, but at least with the Hecarim, it felt like right. he wasn't really able to affect the map at all, like... You would think that the Zillion and Hecarim should be able to, like, roam together and use the combined power and the synergy of the two. And Zillion did throw a bunch of ults on the Hecarim, but the Hecarim ended up being very, very ineffective overall. Say, if you look at damage, did almost less damage than the Leona to champions. And burst like a pinata every time anyone looked at him. Um... But yeah, GG's to SRE. Congratulations on the 2-0. Uh, the remainder of the games in the series are going to be uh, set up, I believe, tomorrow, starting at 7.30 Pacific time. Uh, with oh, any... We only have two games today. Yeah, I think we only have two games today, and then we have three games tomorrow. Uh, which is why I assume Liam came in and started shitposting in Twitch chat uh, <laughs> in the middle of the series. I see. Um, so I think that's it for us tonight. Um, was, 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 it nice, was nice casting with you? Yeah, thanks, mm -hmm. Vince. Uh, I've watched a good chunk of your videos when you sort of send out the VODs, uh, and you're very, very insightful, and it's sort of good to hear your thoughts on things, because you have a really good take on the game, I think. Um, especially as someone who 
is not nearly uh, as good. <laughs> well, I, I had an okay sense about the game. Not now, but uh, my, <laughs> my, my desktop computer just arrived. So it's, it's time to get good. <laughs> the Vanguard is coming back, guys. You heard it here first. <laughs> Um, um, to to Japan server, I'm I'm going on a like a, a really far away travel trip. He's <laughs> taking his excess to the LJL. <laughs> okay, I'll see you guys later. Yep, thank you all. Uh, not sure if I'm going to be casting tomorrow. Uh, I haven't really figured out what the plan is, but I'm sure we'll announce internally, uh, and people can tell their friends if uh, they're interested. But. Uh, thank you all for dropping by. Hope you enjoyed the broadcast and hope you guys have a good night.